The Mark Dacey Show, brought to you on Broadband Box Office Network, coming to you directly from the East Coast at VK Media Studios. We stream live every second Monday of the month, and we're archived on iTunes. So, like us on Facebook. Now, enjoy the show. We are up on the news. Yeah, we, know we are up on the news, We baby. know what's happening, man. Hey, man, I am, if nothing, up with the news and hip because I'm with my boy, Zachary. He's all about the zombie, you know. Check it out. Hey, uh, you going to tell that knock-knock joke? Yeah. Wait, no. come over here. Oh, my God. You got to tell it to me. Okay. Knock, knock. Uh, who's there? Interrupting zombie. Interrupting nah! zombie. <laughs> <laughs> who's you... ever heard of the zombie apocalypse? You're like, oh, no, the zombies are coming. Wrap your lives. <laughs> oh, well, that's a hell of a start. And we're ready to go. Oh, listen, I think Pat needs some help in the uh, control room with the CGI. Yeah, no, I want... No, I think Pat needs some help Please, there with the CGI. You gotta write such stuff down. Ah. Right. Now you gotta beat it. No. I'm oh, bringing these magazines. I'm not gonna to beat it. Yeah, here we go. Can I just stay here for a little? Nope. Bit? Take these magazines just to Pat. For a he while. Needs them. Nope. Just for a while. No, just for a while. No, we'll come back later. Uh, can I say a few things? Oh yeah, sure. Okay. If you're not coming here, you're like a bazillion feet high. Like, if you're like a chess player, who would come? Oh no! Which way are we going? They're coming! Run for your lives! Um, now you say something. Okay, it's time for you to go see Pat with no, the CGI. No, no, you read okay. something on your podcast real quick before I go. Uh, no, uh, it's time for you to go into the control room. Okay. Okay, bye. see ya. Give me a hug. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Oh, what a fantastic opening. It's what happens when you hire family members. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, but that's how that's how the Kardashians got started. <laughs> it's all about the CGI and the zombies, man. See, I am nothing if I am not hip. I'm with the kids, babe. Yeah, puff snooty, notorious, doggy, doctor, do daddy, little biggie buster, hoochie, too cool for school, Shakur.com. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, hashtag, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or as I'm knowing on uh, the net, that guy with the thing in the place. Uh, yeah. So, and I'm thinking it's uh, it's sort of like being the edge in you two. You, you know, like I mean, do you? I mean, if you're gonna meet him, I mean, Bono is Bono. So you meet Bono and say hi, Bono. You know. But if you're meeting the edge, do you do you uh, do you say? Do you speak to him like? What do you say? Do you call him? Nice to meet you, Mister the Edge. I mean, how do you, how do you, or do, maybe, uh, and do his friends just call him by his first name? Hey, the! Yeah, I mean, and does his wife say, oh, uh, and the Edge, honey, would you pick up a quart of milk on your way back home? And thanks, the Edge, honey. I mean, how do you, how do you look? I don't, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> ah. It's your call and probably unimportant, but if you do run into him, now you'll know what to do. My special guest tonight, Rio Clemente. I am so happy. I am so happy that he is here. And how about our hand for our studio audience? No. No, no it's just my friends out there. Yes, uh, it's the riffraff of showing up once again. I, no, the, the, uh, the studio audience, the again, or again, on vacation, they, they left. They left me holding the bag. And look. It's right here. <laughs> and it's their loss, though, because without an audience, they're not going to be able to share in the weed. That's right. <laughs> From state-approved labs in Washington, Oregon, Colorado, Alaska, and Washington, D.C. Yes, Washington, D.C. Who says Barack doesn't get out the vote? <laughs> he saved us $10 billion a month getting out of Iraq, pulling out of Afghanistan, saved the auto industry, saved the financial industry, brought us back from the brink of depression. He's for gay rights. He's for women equal pay. He's for raising the minimum wage. He gave us a National Health Care Act. He oversaw the highest profit on Wall Street ever, cut the unemployment by half, killed Osama freaking bin Laden. But I'll tell you, now <laughs> he can smoke a joint in the White House. That's what I call a president's. 
<laughs> but I'll tell you, you know, uh, being the president can really can really wear you down. It it, it really. I mean, just 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 look. Just watch watch the monitors. Just, just look at what a, a President Obama looks like these days. It's really it's ter it's terrible. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, just being famous in, in and of itself can be a burden. Just take a closer look at some of these once young and famous people. Here, here Beyonce. What? What happened, babe? What? what I mean, Katy Perry. Katy Perry. Oh, my gosh. What's happened to Katy? Harry. What's his name? Whatever his name is. He's falling apart. That's what happens. Rich in famosity. It'll kill you. Taylor Swift. Still, I, I don't know. I might. I might, you know. Oh, Miley. Ouch, but still, I might, I, I could probably date her. I, maybe she could still, I don't know. Jennifer, Jennifer, what happened, babe? Jennifer, oh, there's the other Jennifer. Oh, look, at, uh, she's just, she's falling apart. See, that's, a, the, the stress is real. Kim Kardashian, eek! <laughs> well, she just looks like her inner self anyway now, so. I, and here's Zach, whatever his name is, and look at, he's just, he's falling apart. Stress, it's gonna kill you, really. Ellen DeGeneres, look at, she, she's degenerated, wow. So, you can see what can happen to you. Oh, wait, there's one more. You want to see me, right? Right? Here we go. There I am. I'm just falling apart. No, that's not really me. <laughs> that's not really me. Here you go. There's me. <laughs> can anybody see that? <laughs> How's that? Yeah, does is that, is that work? Look at that. And then look at this. Okay. Well, how about this? How about this one? Ah, yes, the old days. The old days, what can I say? Oh, anyway. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm speaking of the future, of, of course. The spe uh, speaking of the future, I have seen it. Stress, stress, stress. And I will tell you that it's coming up fast. <laughs> and when we come back from this break, not yet, not yet, I am going to tell oh, you. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I can. I'm ready, sorry. Certainly. But if you know what I'm talking about, we can, we can stretch the, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, with the future is with us, and it's coming. It's coming up soon. In fact, it used to be just before, but now it is. And furthermore, it'll be a little bit later on than what it is right now, because right now it's the present. And just think, it was just the past, but it's going to be the future soon. So if you just hang on there, I will uh, tell you all about the future when we come back from this short break. Remember the tidy bowl man. It's Christmas time again, and of course you know that's commercial time again. <laughs> There's Colgate, Palmolive, and Viva, and Bounty. There's Procter and Gamble, and Ivory and Downey. But do you recall the most strangest sales pitch of all? Man in the tidy bowl rowboat had the strangest job of all. Paddling around your toilet, <laughs> ascot, jacket, cap, and all. All of the viewers watched as Mr. Whipple scolded you, along with the Maytag repairman, Joe Izuzu, and Frank Perdue. Then one clogged up Christmas Eve, they all came to say, Tidy with your bowl so bright, won't you clean our pipes tonight? Then how they all just loved him, and how we shouted out with glee. A man in the tidy bowl rowboat, you'll go down in commercial history. time again so you know you're gonna be doing some shopping you know you'll be heading to the malls and so by the way I was telling you about the the future and I have one for you in the words of the prophets are written in the suburban malls and the cell phone calls and echoed in the sounds of rappers <laughs> I don't know. So if you're thinking, you know, about getting a gift for somebody, maybe you want to buy some cigarettes from for somebody. You know, if you, you want to get some loose cigarettes, you can go to Staten Island. 
But if the cops show up, run for your life, okay? Because <laughs> you're not going to be able to buy any there uh, for a while, I think. Nobody's going to be doing it on the street for quite some time. Anyway, the future, I've seen it. Everything. And I know the answers, too. And if you want to know what the future looks like, I have two words for you. Yes. Wait for it. Ready? If you don't count the ampersand, Dave and Buster's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever been? Ever? No, really? Okay, well, either you're closing your eyes to a situation you do not wish to acknowledge, or you are not aware of the caliber of disaster indicated by the presence of a Dave and Busters in your community. Well, you got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets in a table, pockets that mark the difference between a gentleman and a bum. And that's a capital B, and that rhymes with D, and that stands for Dave. And Busters. <laughs> yes, Dave and Busters. Right here. Trouble right here in River City, my friend. Whoa. It's the future, man. I'm telling you, I've been there just recently with Zach. You know, and I think that's why he's so excited. He hasn't come down yet. Let me describe what it's like going to uh, Dave and Buster's. Let's see. How should I begin? Firstly, we walked out of you know the main mall through the reception and, and got our, our wristbands because you know you don't want to get lost with the you know the indices. <sighs> through the unpretentious Dave and Buster's entrance arches. We're gonna have fun, you know? Okay. There to my delight, squatting in front of her personal appearance banner, <laughs> a World Federation female fighter having just ripped open her crop top leather jacket, revealing what I can only imagine was her workout top brassiere for the press and the photographers, who scurried in after her off into the sports bar where I imagine she'd be signing something with men. Anyway, she was escorted off and we went to the game arcade which can only be described to the uninitiated as being, oh, I don't know, like kidnapped into a passenger seat of a running way van, <laughs> hurling along the rim of the Grand Freaking Canyon, <laughs> in the dark, with your lights out, at 100 miles an hour, occasionally stealing glances at your driver whose visage is made up of mostly gigantic flashing neon strobe lights, subwoofing explosions, and decibel piercing sonic vibrational metal rap pomposity. <laughs> it's all over the place. Yes, we had been sucked into the vortex of video game hell. Dave and Busters, welcome. It was like that for like an hour. <laughs> That's why I've lost control of the show. I've, I'm still coming down from that myself. Anyway, it's crazy. Every video game was a super screen ride death of smashing zombie robot killing with no windows. There were no windows in the place. The bells and sirens beckoned thee. More coin, more coin, more, more. Insert credit card here. <laughs> The machines surround a huge oval bar where the adults who have apparently ab abandoned their spawn <laughs> to the cacophony sit and drink obliviously, happy to have some downtime at the mall. <laughs> They're all sitting at this, at this oval bar in the middle of this video crazy machine insanity. It's just it's nuts. You ever hear? Where's Junior? I don't know. Where's the kidnappers over there? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, where's the cops? I don't know. Can I have another one? It's, it's crazy, man. Not that I don't think that uh, Dave and Buster's is, is, you know, pro is probably well, you know, uh, policed and they probably have cameras everywhere. But now my son has grown up on screens and found all of this completely normal and acceptable. Except me, of course. And he flung himself into the maelstrom with the joy of a Moby Dick approaching the Pequod. I, on the other hand, was like Jodie Foster in the cellar looking for Buffalo Bill with the lights out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> kidnappers everywhere. <laughs> it was like crazy. So, I've seen the future, <clears throat> and now you've seen it too. Now, I guess it's time to upgrade my flip phone. I'm not sure. <laughs> Anyway, look, we'll be right back with uh, real Clemente and some real entertainment. In the meantime, this will have to suffice for whatever you think you're uh, probably busy not doing. 
We'll be right back. Honey, gather up the dependents. I'm starved. The what? The two dependents we claim. Be a good spouse and bring them to the table. Have you finished the taxes yet? Of course, my lovely 223 dash. Honey, my social security number starts with 233. mailed the taxes yet, have you? Please double check each name and social security number on your U.S. income tax form. Include the correct first name, middle initial, and last name of all dependents along with their correct social security numbers. Because just one wrong name or number could delay your tax refund. I was too busy acting like a big shot. I didn't double check. Oh, sweetheart. Last night when you were out bowling, I made the corrections. You did? Oh, honey, I'm nuts about you. We're back and we're bigger than ever. How do we do it? How do we do it? Volume, volume, and a 10-year-old. <laughs> Hi, on Dave and Busters. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the most gifted pianists. It has been my pleasure to know and to love. Uh, the Bishop of Jazz. Rio Clemente. So about that dollar fifty that you owe me. Oh, we're back. Sorry. It was a dollar seventy-five. Okay. Well, that's because I'm interested. Of course. Hey. Hey. Rio, thank you for being on the show. Whoa. Um, and I'm just going to start off by saying, you played the White House. Yes, I did. So, what, tell me about that experience. 
It was a fantastic experience. Um, considering everything, I was uh, authorized. I got actually I got authorization from the Coast Guard um, Admiral to wear my uniform when I play. Oh, that's good because you were used to be in the. Uh... Well, I'm in the auxiliary, the uh -huh. Coast Guard auxiliary. Uh, Flotilla 1010, give them a little plug, you know what I mean? <laughs> and um, so it was, it, was, it was absolutely very exciting. Now, did you um, meet any dignitaries, any, any big wigs down there? I met a few. Yeah. Um, the thing was that they had a beautiful, fantastic looking Steinway. Yeah. And it was like sitting in, in a Maserati, you know, you got <laughs> behind that thing and it just went out and just kept going out. Was it in tune out. though? It, uh, it, was, oh. it, it was fantastic. It was absolutely unbelievable. So uh, I sat there and, and I'm thinking, you know, my mother and father were immigrants and they instilled in me about patriotism. Yeah. And uh, and I said, gee, mom and dad could see me now. Uh -huh. You know? You bet, man. So, right. but I did it for my country. I did it for my friends. I did it above all for my family and what a great what, what a great wonderful honor I mean yeah now a spe it, it, so I don't mean to cut you off no. but speaking of other honors you also played at the Friars Club oh you not really play there you are a friar <laughs> right yeah, you remember the Friars how do you Club like your fries <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean that's that's not uh, something to be uh, uh, sneezed at either that's an accomplishment right it was on my bucket list <laughs> <laughs> so it was a show <laughs> That's the funniest thing we've said so far, I think. Yeah, well, what can I tell you? And you've been around the world. I mean, you I want to tell you about this yeah. place. This place <laughs> is the safest haven. If, if we ever get hit with any kind of a bomb, this is where to come. <laughs> it's hard to find. It's in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? <laughs> this is like being in Al Capone's hideout. <laughs> <laughs> you can't find it. It's impossible. Uh, what's your favorite memory of the Friars Club? I mean, you meet all those great guys, all those people, uh, comedians uh, well, and musicians. Um, I've done some concerts there. I got to know Soupy Sale. Yeah. You know, a lot of the comedians, uh. and um, especially Soupy. Uh, I'll tell you a, a short story. Um, Soupy wrote a book before he passed away, obviously before he passed away, because he couldn't write <laughs> right it. Right after he went, yeah. I've been around you too long. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, unbeknownst to me, he put me in the book. Now, the book was practically all written, ready to go. And so they had a book signing, and he was really in bad shape. Yeah. It was terrible. You know, he was folded over, and and uh, so we were all lined up to get his autograph, which was just a scribble, but it was yeah. something. Yeah, it's his own writing. So I, I stood in front of him, and he looked up, and he said, he said, Rio, and he could hardly talk. He says, you're in the book. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm in the book. How would I be in the book? I mean, I've just, I haven't known him that long. And sure enough, he put me in the book. Yeah, and man. Such an honor, you know, such oh, a great, great honor. Oh, that's great stuff. And I went to his uh, funeral and all of his. Oh, Soupy Sales. I mean, everybody grew up with Soupy Sales. He's <laughs> such a legend. <laughs> 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 and he, you, he have you loved been around? Jazz. Yeah. He loved jazz. Yeah. There's no question about that. Wow. So, yeah. and he, he came to Birdland when I played Birdland. He came to see me. Mm hmm. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Yeah. That's great, man. I mean, to be a member of that club is uh, a yeah. real Len, special employee. Len Cario. Uh -huh. I played for him, uh -huh. accompanied him. Yeah. You know, he was a big Broadway star. Yeah. And movie star, obviously. Yeah, right. So. Wow, man. Uh, now, what, who's the most famous person that, that you've met? I mean, you've been all around the world. You've traveled all around the world. Your music has brought you, I mean, all over the place. You've traveled Europe. How about you? Me. <laughs> this is, yeah. I'm, I'm going to introduce you to my son, Zachary. He's great. He's the ne he's going to take over the show slowly. I think he did. I think he did, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so what are you doing with your music now? Where, where's it going? Are you recording? Um, you're well, playing around? I, yeah, I've got a couple albums that, I, I, that I'm thinking about putting out. Uh -huh. and, um, and I've been recording with other people. Yeah. So that, it's, it's pretty, you know, it's it's, um, it's music, whatever it is. I, I, I play at Pachetta in uh, Fairfield right. uh, every Thursday. And um, and I play in, at the Hibiscus in, Best in Marstown yeah. every other Tuesday. And plus doing my concerts and They're that keeping kind of busy. Thing. And I'll, I'll be performing with my trio 
on uh, first night Mars. Oh yeah. At the United Methodist Church. Great. Okay. On the green at 9.45. There's two shows. Yeah, those first nights are great. It's a wonderful time to get out and to really see some really well, it, great... It's a family, family yeah. things. Family night. And the, the, the interesting thing about it is I can remember being out at 4 o'clock in the morning playing. Mm -hmm. And now 11.30, I'm finished. I said, well, okay, what do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go no, home. But really, it... it, it that, you know, as you get older, you appreciate that. Well, you also have the opportunities of, of, of playing a lot more places because but you can kind I've of been call. I've like 22 years. This, I think this is my 22nd year. I only missed the first one. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's great. I've done a lot of them myself, and they're great. And it's yeah. a real opportunity to play for a lot. An appreciative audience is there to, to be Yeah, because they come to see you. That's yeah. The, that's the basic thing, you know. They, it's, um, it's not like... Any, anytime you do a, a concert venue or something like that, the people that come come to see you. It's not like you're playing in a club or. Yes, or exactly. You know, or you become they, background they, or something. They come, they come to eat. Yeah. They don't care about the music. Yeah. Right. Sure. But uh, but that's the nice thing about it. I'm talking with Rio Clemente. Uh, he's uh, the Bishop of Jazz. Uh, you should go out and see him. He's uh, one of the most amazing players around. Uh, and I, you know, you have a web address where people can uh, check well, my out. My website where you can... is down, uh, but I put everything on Facebook right now. There you go. And uh, my web, uh, my uh, email is just bishopofjazz at gmail dot com. There you go. It's pretty easy to remember. Um, have you ever had a bad review? Have you ever had a bad I jazz review? I think I review? got one right now. He <laughs> <laughs> was on the Daisy show. Everything went wrong. I played a song that was the top. Everything else was like the thing with the pyramid bend that was Mark, done. You, I have to say, you, done. You, you totally. were, uh, shut up. You're a very talented guy and, there. and a very dear friend, and I do appreciate you. And I really do. I love oh, you. Oh, man. I just we go back a ways. I love you, too. Uh, you know what? I, uh, now that now that that's over, don't forget to pay me. Yeah, don't worry yeah. about that. I, I, I think I a little light tonight. You'll don't check it and cash it at the same time. Well, I have a little thing about a jazz reviewer who uh, was doing some reviews here. He came to see me. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, reviewing jazz, and I think we have a clip coming up here of uh, a gorgeous Sandler from the uh, uh, Newark Gazette, as I remember. Is that right, Pat? Uh, okay. When you're uh, talking jazz, you're talking about uh, today's guest I have on the show. Mention the name Gorgeous Sandler in any jazz circle nationally and you'll get attention. Gorgeous Sandler is not a jazz bow player, but he writes with the insight and vocabulary of the experienced musicologist. Thank you very much. His writings on jazz are syndicated nationally and uh, he's been a music editor here at the Gazette in Newark for, I don't know, a million years. I'm very privileged to have him in the studio with us today, and he rides a unicycle. <laughs> Gorgeous, yes, thanks for coming. Thank, thank you. Gorgeous? Yeah, get out of here. I love you. Gorgeous. Come on, just, let's get to the question. Anyway, Gorgeous, can I have your attention? Oh, good. Listen, um, yeah. You've written about jazz and every other form of music, uh, and you've witnessed change within uh, the business uh, for years. Uh, I've been around. You've met many of the greats, a lot of them. So where's the book? The book? What book? Book. Hey, look, book spelled backwards is kook. I don't know. What are you talking about? I'll tell you one thing right now. I've met a lot of people in this jazz business, a lot of people in the rock and roll business, a lot of people in the classical jazz music, and they all say one thing. How did you get your job as a music critic? <laughs> I don't know. It's easy to make fun of things. That's all I know. And basically, that's all I really care about. So, uh, can we get to the next question, please? Uh-huh. No. What do you mean, yes? Okay, yeah, then yes. Oh, I'm hypnotizing your audience. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh, look at that. I don't know. Look, whoo, it's just like uh, the Wizard of Oz. Remember the Wizard of Oz, kids? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> look at whoo. That's nice. Anyway, what do you want to ask me another question about jazz? Go ahead, go ahead, kid. You're knocking me out with this stuff. What is the tap? So, what attracted you to jazz? What attracted me? Like uh, in a magnetic way, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> in a magnetic way? Is that what you mean? Like, ma oh, like a yeah. magnet, or something like that? You mean? Like an attraction, like northeast, southwest pole type stuff, like a latitudinal thing, like the Earth, or what do you mean? Do you mean like, do it? Did I really like it? It sounded good. Okay, is that good enough for you? It sounded good. 
It's basically people don't know too much about nothing. And when it comes to jazz, they don't not really understand too much about anything. So, yeah, well, anyway, uh, there's Kenny G and then there's George Benson. There but there's also the seriousness of uh, Kenny Jimmy G. Heath and Illinois Jaquette who have been around and sure. they haven't changed. But uh, uh, Kenny G is my favorite. I love him. I love that. Let guy. me ask you this. Yeah, um, go ahead. There have been a lot of jazz clubs around. Some of them aren't around anymore. <laughs> Wallace's is strictly blues. I love Wallace's. Mostly rock and blues. Rock and blues. Gulliver's is no more. It was around West Patterson, then it moved up uh, to... It was in uh, West Patterson. Mm, I think the Tawako area, no, or no. was it... Uh, Lincoln Park. A little further out than that. Lincoln maybe Park. Lincoln Park, I believe. I just said that. And uh, then it closed. Of course it closed. Uh, Trumpets is still around. Trumpets, you got to get some saxophones in there. Uh, there are some clubs in East Orange. What... Uh, yeah. What happened with the uh, with with the jazz clubs? Can there be more than one in one town, or or uh, is there just not enough interest in uh, certain enough types interest. of jazz uh, as opposed to the real and the commercial? And uh, uh -huh. can you get enough people what? in to support what real the, jazz? What the and hell is you, that important? I have no idea what you're talking about. You, you asked me about four different questions in, in one. You started off with Illinois Jaquette, then you're talking about Wallace's, you're talking about Lincoln Park, they got an airport up there. I think you ought to get on a plane and think about getting a new show. What do you mean, interest? I don't know, is there any interest in your show? What are you talking about? Look, do you like my beret? It's kind of on a slant there, but then yeah. so is, what? Did you say no? Uh-huh. Oh, you oh, Well, let me ask you this. Um, yes? Come on. Why is it important to have what? A music club yeah. that offers something different. A why, music why club. Why can't you give the people what they want? Uh, what do For you mean, instance, you, you I mean, can you give the people what they want and still make it something different? Like Johnny Dirt did. Like Columbia House did. What are you talking about? Again, you got four questions in one kid. I think you ought to get a new show. I think you get a new uh -huh. life. Guys like me don't have a lot of time to come down to a little puny show on a cable really? network. <laughs> I'm telling No, you laugh. Well, uh, well, we don't. Let me ask you this then. Okay. Uh, before uh, I said that you uh, you'd been around the business for a while, you'd met I've been a around. lot of the big names. Sure, big some names. Some luminaries. Let, let, me, let me let me just throw some names at you. Go ahead. Tell me. Go tell ahead. Me, uh, Go ahead. Have it, you've met them. Go ahead. Gorgeous. I really appreciate your being here today, and I'll tell you one thing. What? You know, without your being here, maybe the show wouldn't work. And it's you know, you're definitely a very important part of the really? New Jersey oh, business. Thank you. Uh, of uh, of music what? and. Uh, it's nice to sure. see you supporting the show like this. I'm supporting All right, Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole. Uh, he was a merry old soul, and a merry old soul was he. <laughs> that's, uh -huh. that's my uh, favorite. Yeah, good. Nat King Cole. All right, Satchmo. Who? Satchmo. That's Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. Wasn't he like a, a wrestler? Louis Armstrong. Wrestler? Uh, black uh, trumpet player from the 20s. And Never Florida. heard of him. New Orleans Jesse. I don't know that. No. I know uh, jazz, kid. I don't know what you're talking about. Earl Garner. Earl Garner. He was a maverick. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, that was Jim Garner. Oh, uh, Jim Garner. No. Uh, all right. Uh, I have no idea. Dave Brubeck. Dave Brubeck. Wasn't he a light? That's a soup recipe or something. Yep. Okay. Well, who would you say is Brubeck's important in. now? Now in the, in the jazz you. scene? You. You. You're very important. I, what? One, one other question yeah, for you here. Why, uh, why, why, when I mention <laughs> jazz, yeah. uh, I think of black artists. Uh, I don't think of white artists uh, right away when I think of big jazz artists. Big jazz artists. Is it because the origins are gospel and blues? And, and uh, yep. does, that, does that feeling of yep. freedom that derives sure. out of the, uh, the musical expression of jazz have anything to do with the cultural history of the black race and, and, and how it came out of the South and so forth? Well, the virtual... Can you tell me anything about huh? that? Yeah. Have well, I said... The, what? Stop gorgeous. interrupting me. Gorgeous. You're a host Excuse and me. a half... You're a host you and a half... put your sunglasses for just a second? What? All right. Well, how about this? You know, the word jazz is a... That word, jazz, J-A-Z-Z, -Z, -Z, yeah. it's sort of a musical metaphor. Didn't it come out of a, a slang reference for uh, creative juices, what? so to speak? Huh? Uh, jizz, in what? other words, if I may be so blunt. I mean, didn't it come from a, a, a good feeling of the flow of, uh, of uh, following through on a creative expression? Yeah, sure. If 
following me here? Oh, yeah, that's exactly right. Gorgeous. There's no doubt about it. You've defined me. You time completely. All right. Oh. I, I, I got to get going. Well, I really appreciate you yeah. coming on the show today. Yeah, sure. And I'm sure our guests do as well. I know that. Um, so let me one thing, kids. If you're watching, get a beret. Get some sunglasses. Get a mustache happening. Go places. Do it. Don't let anybody hold you up. That's all I got to uh -huh. say. That's it. That's the whole nine yards. You've heard of Rudolph and Frosty. Their names are such. Don't forget the greedy cringe. The chipmunks three. And yes, one more. Who's seen lurking around your back door? Ooh. He's Randy Raccoon, Mr. Randy Raccoon, only seen by the light of the moon. A devilish guy who's sneaky and shy. striped suit perusing the land for some midnight loot his flashy beady eye and mischievous grin comes the neighborhood for more troubles again he goes about his business always in tune to the music of the night a scavenger's delight he shops for the goodies the price is always right Serenading through the night He's the coolest dude Stealthy and shrewd His mode of operation Mighty crew A special time of year When Santa is near He's ready for the Christmas Holiday cheer Oh, Randy Rockhorn Mr. Randy Rockhorn Only seen by the light of the moon A devilish guy Merry Christmas to Mr. Randy. Ra I'm star. The what? The two dependents we claim. Be a good spouse and bring them to the table. Have you finished the taxes yet? Of course, my lovely 223 dash. Honey, my social security number starts with 233. Uh oh. You haven't mailed the taxes yet, have you? Please double check each name and social security number on your U.S. income tax form. Include the correct first name, middle initial, and last name of all dependents along with their correct social security numbers. Because just one wrong name or number could delay your tax refund. I was too busy acting like a big shot. I didn't double check. Oh, sweetheart. Last night when you were out bowling, I made the corrections. You did? <laughs> oh, honey. I'm nuts about you. There's a fire starting in my heart, reaching the fever pitch, and it's bringing me out the dark.
time, so we should do another song. Yeah. I should remember. What? <laughs> Tonight hasn't been particularly progressively wonderful, so. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Christmas song here. I don't know what it's going to be, but I thought that we'd play it. I don't know. Uh, I think so. Dashing through the snow.
us some piggy puddings. Now bring us some piggy puddings. It's a show and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Randy Lupo, host of the Randy Lupo Show on Broadband Box Office. Wait, is that a tongue twister or an alliteration? Come meet my favorite people, comedians, actors, writers, spiritual people, and everyone in between. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Hi, my name is Tom Ragu of the Tom Ragu Sit Down Comedy Show. You can listen to us at the Broadband Box Office. And for more information, please visit www.tomragu.com slash podcast. Hi, I'm Lisa Descoli. And I'm Annie Weiss. Tune in to Talk of the Town on broadbandboxoffice.com. The second Tuesday of every month at 7 p.m. And like us on Facebook and leave us your comments. Hello, this is Dr. Barry Prostowski. I invite you to watch Courageous Doctors, an exciting new show on broadband box office about how healthcare is affecting you today. I'm Lou Cesenia. And I am Daisy. And check us out at the Greater Jersey Buzz. At broadbandboxoffice.com. Broadbandboxoffice.com. Remember that. The finest talent in the world are on these microphones every month. I kid you not. Yes, we will have a variety of different guests ranging from comedians, entertainers, singers, politicians, you name it. We're going to bring it to you with light conversation, a lot of information, but most of all, a lot of fun. Check us out at the Greater Jersey Buzz. And you'll see Daisy too. And you'll see Lou. (laughs) 